One thing I've learned in my life as a Christian is you have to come to a place of reality with yourself, with your God, and with the people around you. You have to deal with some uncomfortable truths that probably start with yourself. And I know in my own heart and mind that dealing with those truths that though you may come to some conclusion on them, and God may heal you from that or deal with you on it, it will always be a sore spot or a tender spot where it always feels a little raw and you might have baggage from it or buttons to be pushed. Because you see, God is the only one that can see inside. You can't. I can't. We're told that let a man examine himself and to see if he be found in the faith, which is an interesting way of saying it because that means that there's a criteria on the one hand, but there's also something that a man has to examine himself to see if he meets the criteria. And if you come to a realization that you don't meet the criteria, then you've learned what God wants you to learn. You discover that God is true and we are really, in our hearts, pretty corrupt, pretty despicable creatures that were not for God's grace and love and it's really his mercy that we would be consumed, we would be annihilated, as it were. In ministry, there is a bad habit going on of ministers allowing themselves a freedom they don't have, a responsibility to examine themselves that they don't do, a challenge that they're called to hold themselves accountable to a higher standard that they refuse to be held to because they have usually a self-delusional kind of mechanism going on where there's people around you that are congratulating you or saying good job or they enjoy or even on Facebook people will get a certain number of likes or a certain amount of friends and they feel like they're doing something good to cover what they are bad about. Jesus said that every man would stand before him alone. You will stand before God you will stand before the Son of God himself. And you'll give an accounting for what you did with what God gave to you. Because you see, God did give you something. He gave you his mercy. He gave you his Son. He gave you a life, a brand new start to go forward with as you would choose to do and allow God to do in you as much and as free as you want to be. But if you gave back that freedom to God and made him Lord, then you chose to put yourself under submission, a secondary mission to do what Jesus wants you to do. And if you did, then when you stand before Jesus, then he will say to you, come ye, blessed of my Father, and here the kingdom prepared for you. But if you didn't do those things that he wanted you to, if you maybe excused your own sin, maybe pardoned your own iniquity, maybe you didn't think it was so bad and you gradually talked yourself into not seeing yourself as a sinner, then you're going to find yourself called a worker of iniquity. You're going to find yourself standing before Jesus and maybe cast away. Let a man examine himself and see if he be found in the faith. We must try our hearts. We must ask God to reveal just all the junk that we are so that we wouldn't be prideful, but that we would be humbled. Because you see, God will take the humble people and make them his standard of righteousness. But pride and arrogance and righteousness he will cast far from himself. 
And for me, I know oftentimes in my life, I, I go before God and I, I agonize over sin in my life because I have sin in my life. I am a sinner saved by grace. I know the evil that's in my heart, how wicked I can become so quickly and how easy it is to step into it again and become that person that God would not have me to be. And you know, so do you. So are you. Because we need something more than just a standard and the ability to choose. We need literally the Holy Spirit not to give us all these gifts and fruits which are Ooh, yeah, cool, <laughs> and oh so wonderful, but we also need the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts, to reveal who we really are, to show us what we need to do to be more, act more, live more like Jesus, because if we don't, if we fail, to let God take us like clay and sometimes splatter us back on the potter's wheel to form us again. Then he'll say, I'm done with you and throw the clay aside. We need to search our hearts and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. For it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. But because his faithfulness and his righteousness is such that he loves us to the degree that he's willing to reach out to us over and over and over and over again, then we're able to go on one more day and seek the Lord while he may be found to Ask God to fill us again with his Holy Spirit, to convict us of our sin, to not let us go our own way and have the freedom that we say we have. For there is no freedom in grace to do as you choose. There is only the responsibility to acknowledge God in control of our lives and to act like him. In my life, Whenever God brings such a meaningful message, I think of fasting and prayer. And I know that this week there's a whole week long service going on in Calvary chapels, a few of them that have gotten together to, to pray, to seek the Lord, to ask Him to reveal and to do things that normally He doesn't do, but He's willing to listen to see if our hearts are true, if our attitudes are correct, and to put us into right perspective about what we should be praying and doing and acting and being. And I think of them and I bless them for what they're doing and their faithfulness to see the body of Christ as such and to have a heart that desires God first and foremost above all else. And in my life, flesh and blood that I am, the only thing I cry out is always to God, Oh God, be merciful unto me a sinner. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me always the joy of thy salvation. O oh God Almighty, keep your spirit within me that I might worship you. The Holy Spirit is at hand to help you. Why dost thou judge thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14.10 God in love and wisdom has given us in his Holy Spirit every gift, every power, and every help that we need to serve him. We do not have to look around for some other way. 
the most solemn aspect of this is our individual responsibility. We alone are accountable for ourselves. The Bible teaches that a day is coming when we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone faces a review of the things done in the body, whether good or bad. In that day, we will be fully exposed, and the things that we have done in our own strength and for our own glory will be quickly blown away, like worthless straw and stubble, forever separated from the kind of deeds and ministries which were wrought by the Spirit of God, and which are described as eternal treasures in the sight of God Almighty, which are gold and silver and precious stones that fire cannot harm. In that day, all that is related to the work of the flesh will perish and pass away. And only that which has been wrought by the Spirit of God will remain and stand. Do you dare to accept the fact that the sovereign God has designed to do all of his work through spiritually gifted men and women? Therefore he does all of his work on earth through humble and faithful believers who are given spiritual gifts and abilities beyond their own capabilities because in them there dwells no strength of themselves or ability, but it is always of God that it was accomplished. It was the promise of Christ that you shall receive power through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and along with the power, the bestowment of sweet graces and pleasant fruits of godliness, when he is allowed to control those persons whom he has chosen. I grieve so often from this ministry of prayer and people say, oh, we need revival so we can have this presence come because the presence was there and the gold dust was there and there was wings and feathers and there was prophesying and there was resurrections and healings and there was all this gaga goo goo stuff, you know, and we were all so excited, you know, and you listen to them and you go, but, but where was Jesus in this? Did you talk about Jesus? Was there, was there Jesus really being seen or do you keep talking about the presence of the power on high, the power of this, the spirit of that? And they don't seem to talk about Jesus. Jesus said in that day when he stand before God Almighty and we give an accounting for our lives, would we not say to him, have we not cast out demons in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done all these marvelous works? And what will Jesus say to them? What will he call into being when he's examining our hearts before him and says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't want to hear about the power of God. I don't want to hear about the miracles of God. I really don't want to hear about the Holy Spirit because he's the one who's convicting us of sin. He's the one who's perfecting us and causing us to remember what Jesus said. I don't want to hear about the fruits of the Spirit. I want to hear about what Jesus is and does and moves in your life. Because Jesus does do it through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, as he's living in us. But Jesus said something interesting that I find very wrong in the Pentecostal kind of terminology. Jesus said, when he, the Comforter, is come, he will not speak of himself. And yet I hear all these, these prophets tell me that the Spirit of God said that. And these prophets tell me, oh, but the presence did this. And oh, but the, the God said, thus saith the Lord, they use. And they don't remember that the scripture said, woe unto those that thus saith the Lord, that God did not say thus saith the Lord. And my prophets don't say that anymore. Have they not read that? You know, it hurts me to see in others myself 
and know that I could be as them, and I have been as them at times. Maybe not the Pentecostal ones that bark and roar around and laugh and giggle and do weird things, but the judgmental type, you know, where you kind of, you go, that ain't right, you know, you, you kind of try to tell them, you know, and you don't blast them, but you don't bless them either, you know, and I don't want to be like that, you know. I even have gone out of my way lately to keep them distant from me so I don't get tempted to judge my brother for sins that I might commit. I would rather figure out a way to entreat them and say, look, we can't be doing this. This is wrong. Can't we just like focus in on the gospel and Jesus talking about what he's doing in our lives? I think that's what Tozer's saying, and I think that's where we need to go, you and I. I think we really need to be less of ourselves, more about Jesus. Because if it's not about Him, what are we doing? What really do we have to talk about or share? If it's not about the Son of God, and if it's not about his mercy and his grace. God help us because we need his help.